All right, everyone, it's time to get around to Lies of P. This is a Souls-like that's... I was going to say it's from... but that's, I don't think it's from anyone we know about, really, so far. But it's uh, about Pinocchio. So that's a choice someone can make. I'm a little afraid of this game because in the time since it came out, some of my friends have played it already. In particular, Toaster mentioned it like... I think he mentioned that this might be harder, or at least has higher difficulty spikes, and at those moments it's harder than both Sekiro and Elden Ring. And those games both broke me and made me question whether or not I'm like getting old and can't beat video games like this anymore, so I'm a little afraid of that. I've covered every From Software Souls game and Souls-like, and a great variety of other souls likes and this is the most promising one at the moment i think in honor of the great writer carlo clodi can you hear me geppetto's puppet we need your help So, I guess I'm a puppet, and that I am, I'm a twink, but I have this arm, basically. That's pretty much what I've got going for me. I don't know a ton about, uh, Pinocchio lore, or what exactly it's drawing from exactly, but it was very amusing to see this game get announced and see it around PAX over a year ago, because of the fact that it was on that wave of, like, there being so many new Pinocchio things like there was the Disney remake of their own Pinocchio and then there was uh, that really bad Polly Shore Pinocchio and then the Guillermo del Toro one which is the only one I've seen out of the recent ones and that was neat that was a neat film Pinocchio was somewhat upsetting and alien and very odd in that one and then uh, so on the on that wave of news about Pinocchio stuff we then got here's the <laughs> the the edgy Pinocchio souls like which I don't know much about. There you are. I've been looking all over for you. I have not played the demo. So this is going to be new for me. This is one of the most surprising cases of like, what do you mean everyone's saying it's good? I'm so baffled by that project. Those things calling my attention. I see they caught Jiminy, too. But we have to hurry. My name is Sophia. Please come to Hotel Crot, and I'll explain what's happening. Jiminy, please escort him to the hotel. Did Jiminy say Gemini? It's spelled how I expect Gemini to be spelled. I think the little robot voice might have said Gemini, but the ghost said Jiminy? To give us the idea of like what they're going for with that name. I assume this is the ghost. This is the 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 spirit or deity that awakens Pinocchio in the first place. Makes him a real boy. Uh, upper belt, lower belt, use X to select belt item. Huh. Hold down A to use extra bag. A. Last resort. Uh, let's not press the... This is my last resort. Weapon durability. Hmm. Complicated. So we have an... We have an X button for using that bar. The equivalent of like the Estus thing. It's like... In some of these games, you have a standalone healing item, and in some of them, or a standalone healing button, and in some of them, it's just your use item button, and you have to scroll through all of your items, which you probably are defaulting to keeping on your Estus Flask equivalent, but then you, you can scroll to other things. And it looks like this is a version of that, where we use the D-pad. This top one's probably my Estus Flask, and it's probably empty right now. That's a... F wow, it is a Souls-like. Look at that pose. Uh, <laughs> and then this... It looks like if you hit... 
up, you get your normal healing, and down, you can scroll through their stuff. So it's like a different version of that whole thing. I did quite like the change they added around, like, Dark Souls 3 or so, where if you just held down the deep... If you held down the D-pad button that was for changing items, it would skip back to the, the first one. And that was how you would quickly get back to your, your flask. Is there a run button? Oop. I can... I can left trigger attack, and every other bumper and, and trigger doesn't do anything. Oop. I guess that's just, uh, that must just be the lantern I picked up a second ago. Yeah, that makes sense. I think most of our buttons just don't work yet. Including running. Let's get you out of there. Find something that might help. Are big vats. Well, that's not good. But the streets are not safe. Arm yourself with one of the weapons over there. It'll be helpful on your way to the hotel. The path of the cricket, the bastard, and the sweeper. Balance, dexterity, and strength. Huh. Huh. So, okay, so there are, each of them is a blade and a hilt? Is what the little combo plus plus thing on the bottom is? I don't know what the... what the... Which display? Oh, hello. See, I don't, I don't have context for the hilts yet. I know the blade type, so it's like... Ironically, the one that's called Sweeper looks like a ba like it might be a bastard sword, and the one for for the bastard is a rapier. But a balanced combat style with both power and speed, quick and nimble combat style for striking the enemy's weak spots, a heavy combat style that cuts down enemies using great physical strength. Uh, is it a style that you have to stick to for the playthrough, or is it just the gear they put you they give you at the beginning? Because usually. In Souls, like, it's just gear and stats, but immediately you can just get different gear and stats. Um, what do these stats mean? I assume vitality is health, so vigor must not be health. It must be something else. Sometimes vigor means health in games, so it's probably your stamina. My go-to reaction in these games is to get as much health as possible, as fast as possible, because... Whatever healing they give you is useless if you don't actually end up using all of it before you die. And it's easier to survive long enough to actually use all your healing if you can actually survive a couple of hits. Because if you, if you, if you keep dying abruptly, then you die without healing, and that significantly reduces your, your survivability overall. So, like, increasing your health bar in a soul's like isn't just a linear buff, it's like an exponential one. Because it enables you to actually use all of your healing when you might not otherwise... Unfortunately, this is just me making a choice with no context about how the game feels, so, uh, Big Sword. Let's try Big Sword. Destination Hotel Court. Recommend escaping from this location. Okay. Yep. Bumper and trigger on the right side now work with our light and heavy. Robot, str robot strong. Those are dead people. They look human. I mean, I look human, so who knows? What happened to Geppetto? Oh, there's an enemy. I don't see anything around. This is oddly well lit. It's, nope, not a, not a thing. Can I do it? Nope, no backstab. Oh, how do I dodge? Okay, now we do have a dodge. Gotcha. Ah. Sawtoothed wheel. I'm gonna get a vibe for how this works. So, holding right... Let's see, so right trigger, swing. Hold right trigger, do a combo. Which, all things considered, that did not... For the heavy weapon, that didn't hit that heavy. I don't think he even really got stunned. So that's worrying for me. 
There's my my light attacks. Can I chain heavy attacks? Kind of. That's two different moves. And you quickly run out of stamina. B is run. There's a roll. Still good damage I can follow up on. I just had to be ready for the fact that he wasn't really going to get obliterated. Can you jump? Okay, yeah. They're doing the hold. They're doing the hold B, click left, stick, jump. That's where it is. I tried the variations. I tried hold B, then double tap B. Which is one of the weirdest solutions anyone's come up with. Pulse cell. Recover HP. There's a maximum number of times pulse cells can be used. When you reach the maximum, the cell will be discharged. If you attack enemies while the cell is discharged, the pulse cell will gradually be charged. Oh. You can regenerate your heal. Nope. Oh. He's being very rude to that body. Just swinging away. Let's see. <clears throat> B is dodge, rear dodge. Guard is left bumper. Extra bag, I know about that. Switch weapon. That's all I got. Uh, let's see. Ow. I think I have heard there's like a guard at the last second thing. I don't know if I... I think I just timed it wrong. Krat Exhibition. Uh, 18 whatever whatever. That's what year it is. I can't click on it again. Witness the greatest show on earth. Experience the future of the world. It's got text that goes away automatically. Kind of hard to get that first hit to land. Oopsie. I probably would be flattening people if it actually did hit with both hits, but I keep only hitting with one. I've got a blue pip now? There you go. That one hit. Still doesn't kill, though. Not quite. That's not ideal. So we're fighting puppets. This game is Puppet Core. Puppet Puppet Punk. That's what <laughs> like steampunk or diesel punk. It's puppet punk. Welcome. It's the dumbest thing I've ever said. The station employee has the train station keys. Guard. You can block enemy attacks by guarding. If your guard successfully you reduce damage, but consume stamina, reduce damage will be transferred to guard re regain. Guard regain accumulates, but gradually decreases over time. When you have guard regain, you can attack enemies to recover HP. Ooh. But if you block... If you block, you take reduced damage, but you still take damage, which is how it usually goes, unless it's a 100% block shield, which we don't have a shield at all right now. But then some blocking gives you a meter, I guess, that lets you heal? If a guard succeeds right before being hit... Triggers a perfect book guard. Uh, when a perfect guard is successful, you will not receive damage. Only stamina is consumed. You can use perfect guard to destroy an enemy's weapon or put an enemy in staggerable status. Okay, so there is a timed-based block. Maybe like, like the like like the witch time dodge in Bayonetta or something. You have a ranged weapon, don't you? Yeah, you do. Hey, buddy. There you go. I did a perfect block. There's a big satisfying explosion of sparks to really see a uh, cell that you've accomplished that. And I guess the point right now is I'm completely doused in oil. Oh, it goes away over time. But I'm doused in oil because I'm fighting artificial beings. Ah! Not ideal.
<laughs> or might. Everyone's trying to fight me with signs. You're the next v Venigini. You are something's tomorrow. Anybody waiting around corners this time? And why is your wily ways? Huh. This feels like the definition of a Dark Souls. This does not open from this side style door. Like I just got around behind it. And this would be an actual justi justification for why it couldn't open from that side before. It's one of those goofy elements of games where it's like not very... It's hard to comprehend why the thing isn't opening from that side, as they as they say. All right, so are there sneak attacks? I saw that. There was a special red thing, a fatal attack. You get a special red highlight when you initiate it. That's handy. That's a nice little bit of quality of life where you don't have to deal with the the, the uncertainty of whether or not it'll work correctly. A decent number, a decent amount of that confusion in Dark Souls 1 came from the fact that, like, for both backstabs and reposts, you often had to, like, plant your feet just right and kind of, like, hesitate for a second just long enough to not be stuck in some kind of other existing animation. Otherwise, it would just do a normal swing and you would, and you would lose your chance. Which could be frustrating when you're trying to, uh, backstab, but it was especially frustrating when you're trying to, uh, uh, parry and repose, which is much more higher risk and difficult to execute, and then your reward for parrying successfully might be just not being able to make the repost work correctly, and just wondering why it's not working. Passenger's note. If anyone finds this note, get out of the station and run. Be sure to steer clear of the waiting room. I saw a huge puppet smashing people to death in there. I locked the door, but I don't know if- I don't know if that'll work. At least it should stop people from randomly coming in. If I'm going to die... I'm just not reading correctly. <laughs> I'm going to die soon, so I want to help you, even if it's not much. Please survive. Anyone. I'll be very lonely if I'm the only human in the puppet the pup apocalypse. The pup apocalypse. The popey popo. <laughs> that reference doesn't make any sense to anybody, unless they know... No. I'm not going to help. They just taught me how to jump. I wonder if there's a specific thing to jump around here? Or are they just trying to tell me, I can jump down there! Wouldn't that be fun? If I, did, if I jump down there? I don't think I saw like a secret? Like a ledge to land on? Oh! Found him. He knows. Let's let's get some practice in, I guess. Ah! Hi. Rude. Okay, so there's my recovery. I healed my health back from swinging back. That's good. But I got to express that. My original goal was to practice the parry, though. I'm so bad at parry mechanics. It's part of my fear of it. Any Sekiro comparisons? I managed to beat that game without ever it without out without it ever fully clicking. I don't think it's a bad game, but there were stretches of it that were torture for me specifically. If anything, when you then whenever you actually went and fought a big monster, I was like, oh, thank God. The game was was more playable to me in those contexts than when you fight a ninja guy that has a hundred attacks and you have to parry them all. There are doors and ladders all throughout Krat that are locked by devices. You can unlock these doors to, or go down the ladders to create shortcuts. It's weird to have that as a pop-up, but I guess... I guess I just mean like I've now gotten behind that door that zapped me earlier, I assume. 
It was the does not open from this side. Yep, so now if I die, I can get back to this boss fight way faster. And he's definitely a boss fight. It'd be weird telegraphing if he wasn't, honestly. He's the people beater. He beat all these people off. Hi. Are you friend? Yep. Yeah. Not really a boss fight, I guess. Hold right trigger for a charge attack. Staggerable. When you're attacking, a white outline will appear around the enemy's HP bar. When this happens, you can make a the enemy staggered with a charge attack. So he's, he's staggerable now. Fatal attack. Face a, a staggered enemy and press right bumper. Heavy damage. Okay, so he wasn't a boss fight. He was just a bigger dude. Way to make me feel look, look real silly. I got like two successful parries, and I think that led to the stagger state. I also hit Y. Okay, so... Yeah, that's what's going on there. So the blue meter on the top left is spent via the combos that are shown on the bottom right. So... This left bumper plus Y? There's a little shield above that. So there must be like a left bumper plus Y that is a, comp a defensive resource spend. And otherwise I have a three hit combo I can do where I just hit Y three times. And that's what the, the, sort, the blade part says. And I guess that's what it means when we had those multi-part weapons in the character creation screen. We haven't had the chance to combine them yet. Or fool around with those. But I think the blade and hilt on top of potentially having their own stats also have their own moves. Can't grab that. Okay. Let's look at my stuff. Uh, you attain the following benefit item. The alchemist's hat, illusory emerald glasses, treasure hunter's mask, treasure hunter's hunting... Why do I have this? Oh. Christmas. I didn't pre-order, so I guess these must just be like bonuses that were added over time. Just cuz. No amulets. Defense parts. Workshop, union, lightweight frame, or basic frame. So this one makes me take more, more damage, but it reduces my weight significantly. So my carry load is currently 44%. And so these these are our armor essentially. I get the feeling they don't change our appearance. So upper belt has one item on it, and you can keep it as one item, which probably makes a lot of sense. But or you can move in and mix in other things as you go. Let's see basic items: the pulse cell recovers health, as as we saw before. The grinder repairs weapon durability. Weapon durability decreases. Da -da 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 -da. It's just what durability is. Those in battle, the grinders, their lifeline, sharpness of their blade can mean life or death. You can't repair things that run out of health, but notably the grinder does not have a number next to it. Like the bottom of the screen says num a mountain bag one for all of these, but specifically this one says one next to it. This one says three next to it on, on the icon, but these ones don't have icons. So it seems like this is a, a repair mechanic that you that it's just like an item you always have on hand. You can't fix a broken weapon, but you can just repair any weapon all the time. Seemingly for free if it's just usable all the time. But that makes me wonder if they're going to specifically have weapons dropping into durability during combat and you have to worry about grinding your weapon back up during openings that you find so you can keep doing the boss fight. Monad's lamp. Does light. A small lamp with a cricket guide puppet inside. It illuminates the darkness with a faint light. Do not be afraid. 
Even if you get lost in the fog, the cricket guide will be with you. Last resort, immediate death. A special device that releases all of the P organs energy at once dies upon use. The old man feared the possibility of his son failing to awaken properly and going into a frenzy. The initialization device was made as necessary evil to, for delicate readjustments. Getting a little bit of lore here. Fable Catalyst. A catalyst made to supplement puppet abilities rapidly charges Fable. What is Fable? Catalyst, the catalyst made puppets more efficient by circulating ergo energy within their bodies. This groundbreaking invention was based on one of the alchemist's ideas. On one alchemist's idea. Sawtooth wheel. A common sight in Krat. It's a throwing object. And get someone's attention. Motivity and technique D. So many names. Thermite. It's got to be fire. Yeah, fire damage bomb. Dim ergo fragment. Okay, so ergo is souls. Ergo 100. So I can spend I can spend this to get 200 souls, or I can spend the two of them to get that. A fragment of ergo, a mysterious pow power stone. Power stone that can be found in Krat. Geppetto's puppet can absorb ergo and turn it into power. Ergo is both a power source and currency in Krat. Even small pieces can be put to good use in the city. Gestures. Just do little poses for funsies. Or maybe they give you some kind of reason, who knows. Costume? They just have whoops all souls... Fat, like, souls burning. Those antlers are really goofy. Look at this hat. A hat worn by alchemists. Da -da -da -da. A necessity of your trend-setting celebrity and crat. Lofty humans use dignity and grace to elevate themselves. True elegance does not need a sword to conquer an opponent. I don't think those are stats. A mask worn by the treasure hunter in Krat. This is the mask worn by the Hound in pursuit of secrets and conspiracies. Everybody assumed that the greatest treasure hunter of Krat would be incredibly wealthy. However, there is only one treasure that he sought to protect. I zoom in. Getting closer to what to his face. No. Can you wear these glasses? You must only combine with the other thing. Look at those glasses. I... <laughs> Look at this Tumblr sexy man here. What's this called? What's he called? The, the, uh, the one slur? Is that what the, is that what we're going for here? Oh my goodness. You... Hello. Well, now I'm fucking rad. I mean, obviously. Now he looks fucking cool. Alright. Bag. Material. Functional items. Weapon. Blue, blade slash handle. Legion. Oh, we get different arms. Here's all my defense parts. So this is more like a, like a more comprehensive or more spread out version of the menu. It seems to be functionally the same items, but you get to look around a bit more, and that's kind of more, like, less frustrating to look at on some level. Well, those are close-up, I guess. You do. Not much to learn here. I guess the, that heart up top means I'm level 10, and I need 720 ergo to level up. Let's try the grinder. Alright, so that's my durability. <laughs> now that I'm wearing the fursuit head, let's try grinder. Okay. I don't... You don't even have to be clever, honestly. The, these things just come to you. Like, they just... The game set themselves up on their own. It's like when everyone found out that the protagonist of Armored Cord 6 is named 621, and then the, everyone just had to deal with that. And process that fact for a while. Oh, right, I got the key. That's what happened. Now I can open this door up here.
Well, that's a cool sight. This is this is a pretty this is a pretty game. I do quite enjoy like it's not the quite not quite the most sensical comparison, but I just I grew up watching Batman the animated series. I just enjoy like the vaguely Gothamy vibes of just the big tall buildings in the rain with the occasional lights. That statue appears to be wearing a cape, which is odd. Or a statue. I gotta say, this character is like comically badass so far, so it's very funny that he's easily blo blockaded by luggage. There just are so far. There just are strings of luggage that stop me from going into the wider world, and that's how they're they're, they're dealing with that. I have to remember to keep my healing item uh, equipped. I just know for a fact that there will be a difficult boss fight in the future, and I will accidentally use the the bottom belt item instead of the top belt item and die. Repair the Stargazer. Is that a bonfire? Use a Stargazer to fully recover HP and stamina, as well as charging your pulse cells. Yes, it's a, it's a, it's a bonfire. You'll be revived at this point in case of death, but they, then the enemies come back. Yep. This is called a Stargazer. A marvelous device the Stalkers used in the past. As we are, we are not strong enough to beat the puppets. But if I lend my power to this stargazer for a moment, gather ergo, clever one. This stargazer will make you stronger. But the stargazer's strength doesn't last forever, so be careful with it. Hurry up and come to Hotel Krat. One hundred challenge run folks just heard the line, we're not strong enough to win, and took that as a personal challenge. <laughs> and that's, that's quite a thing to, to say in a genre where people famously beat the games without leveling up. Not that I'll have any intents on trying that. Right, so I have enough for two levels right now. Or vitality wouldn't hurt, or strength. Let's see. There's my defense stats. Physical attacks up there. Yep. Motility. Capacity. Vigor. Vigor is stamina. And it's physical defense. Most things seem to increase your physical defense. Vitality increases your guard regain. Ah, yes. If I level up my capacity, I'll increase my... My legion. What the fuck are you talking about? All right, where's the look at stats button? Does my mouse do it? Legion. Le legion. What do these words mean? What do words mean, game? It's kind of important. Clicking left stick, clicking right stick, D-pads. Oops. Back. This middle button, whatever that is. Oops, no, 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 not the game bar. Go away. Go away, Windows. This is odd. I'm not trying to be whiny or anything. It's just like, you know, Dark Souls 1 hit us with similar screens with way too many words that were made up or had dubious context. And then they gave us a button that let us go into inspect mode and highlight all the words to learn what they mean. But I've tried every button, I think, and none of them do it. So I don't know what Legion is, or why I want more of it. <laughs> and Motivity. Is Motivity strength? I think it must be, because this is a strength build. Anyway, um... Hmm. Fable slot. Okay, so f yeah, rapidly increases Fable, and that other thing means that it gives me... It rapidly refills my energy bar that I use to do special attacks. Advance increases my legion, whatever that means. Technique. Let's see, none of these highlight fable slots, so none of them are going to increase my fable. Let's look at my motility. This should increase... Going by how the weapon scaling probably works, this probably increases my damage more than technique, but let's see. 
Technique gives me plus one. And motiv motivity gives me plus four. Yeah, it's plus four per level. So we definitely have progress to be made there. I'm just going to go motivity and vitality. Split the difference between increasing my health and my, and my attack for now. It'd be nice if I could use my physical souls from here. But anyway, uh, if I use one of those, one of my hard souls, I should be able to level up again. Use storage. Let's use one of them. What? Oh, did I not use it? Oh, use storage means put in storage, not use from my storage. I was too ready for that to be convenient and be like, oh, that's what I was looking for. Okay, uh, use supply items. We're gonna do normal inventory. This, use. There you go. Uh, That'll just give me a tad bit more. That was close enough to make the difference with that. So we just gained three levels. And eventually I'll know what the words even mean. That'll be fun. Hi. He's trying to get my attention. What's up, buddy? Doing alright today? Ah. Not good at parsing the timing of that attack, apparently. It looks like a big wind-up, but then the swing comes surprisingly quickly once it starts. It surprises me. Oh no, is that a dog? Oh no. Puppet dog! Guy. Every dog is always scary in these games. But he didn't seem that bad yet. He wasn't charging me at great distances and then doing a bunch of jump attacks rapidly. Dog enemies can be so uniquely punishing that you're immediately afraid of them in these games. Ow! Did not think that was going to reach me. I thought I was going to back away. Whoops. Wow. Okay, just eating hits today. Good start. Vivid ergo fragment. This direction there, this direction there, okay. Hmm. Let's, t let's treat this up to my hub and try to slowly... Let's hug the right wall. Let's have that be my approach, because it looks like there's maybe a lot to check out here. We'll figure out as we go which doors might be locked. Now he dies from the hit. After it not working for a while, it is satisfying to have that attack actually one-shot somebody now. Or, it's a combo, but... Get the most loyal servant. Oh, it's about the puppets. I thought they were just talking about slavery. I'm a little worried. What's happening in this setting? Although, given that I'm playing as a puppet, it probably is already like slavery, so that's not great. Because you inherently are conditioned to think that the character you're controlling is probably basically a sentient person and not a, f a feelingless thing because then you wouldn't feel much about the character you're playing as. There you go. I'll get your timing down, damn it. Oh. My goal is to significantly increase the frequency which with, with which we see that big flash. I gotta step it up. Oh god. A cavalcade of doggos. Ow. Fable Arts. Press Y. Or y other Y. Uh, looks like. 
That's just, it's the description is exactly what I intuited. The main reveal there was just the fact that uh, attacking people refills it, which is an ongoing thing. Being aggressive seems to simultaneously recharge multiple different things. Krat Times, issue 183. The Krat Grand Exhibition has been delayed. This decision was made to protect the citizens until the puppet frenzy that has recently paralyzed the city is under control. The occurrence began on Rosa Isabella Street, resulting in hundreds of casualties. While the cause is still unknown, the number of casualties and the scale of damage are both growing. As the crisis dragged on, the workshop and Ven Ven Venigni Company, uh, Krat's largest puppet factory, announced that they would offer emergency supplies to citizens and do everything that they can do to alleviate the situation. A task force is investigating the possibility of a fatal loss of the Grand Covenant, which is the control protocol of the workshop's puppets. However, there is no quick solution as of now, with the puppet frenzy resulting in more casualties. As the city braces for a resurgence of the petrification disease, the citizens have, were advised to stay indoors for their safety. However, many citizens are trying to escape through Kratz Central Station, intensifying the general chaos. So for all intents and purposes, the puppets in this little piece of Pinocchio lore are just, they're androids. They're androids. We've heard of androids. We know what androids are. It's a, it's a, the Matrix style setting where, uh, they're blocking the road with a horse corpse. They really don't want me going in certain directions. Yeah, it's a it's a, a town where people automated things with automatons for convenience, and now they're revolting for some reason, either because of free will or because of something else is happening. Not gonna lie, I kind of wish they just let me roam this open square instead of blocking it so awkwardly with very unclear barriers, where I have to kind of scrape around and see whether or not they're barriers or not. I'd rather there just be more obvious blockades at the end of the at the end edges of the room or something and let me walk to those but maybe this area opens up over time and some of this debris moves around let's look at this statue i don't think there's a first person so yeah it's a statue wearing a cape but it looks like it was just like a a hood slash bag thrown over his head afterwards, and someone has hung a body from his hand that does look like a human. Welcome to the city of Krat, in honor of Valentinus, who erected the cornerstone of origin, I think it said. This text stuff slightly annoys me. It goes away a little too fast. You don't press a button to make it go away. It just goes away on its own. And then weirdly, even though you're still standing at the prompt, you can't press A again to look at it again. You have to walk away and come back to look at it again, even though you're still standing in front of a thing and it's still glowing. It's minor, but it's just odd. <laughs> it's just oddly implemented. Hi, buddy. Anybody hanging out at the corners? Is the front side of the lock? Yep. Alright, we'll be going back through there later. Alright, my weapon. There we go. Gotta keep an eye on that meter. That is its own kind of interesting because... Durability has been a thing in Souls games in general, and I keep advocating for the idea that they should just de they should just delete it already. The closest they've come to making it a mechanic was Dark Souls 2, which was interesting a bit in that like over the course of a zone, you could you, you, they put the like this game they put your your durability meter on the screen, so that means that it's a, a thing you should be worrying about at all times. That was too early. There we go. And like it, that's the thing is like if, you, if you're putting the meter on the screen, that's that's telegraphing the idea that it's a thing you should be thinking about all the time, as opposed to just like a background thing. Like it's an ongoing concern, like your health. 
And so, and that game did have your your durability going down faster than normal, so you did have to worry about like using a whetstone or something, or changing weapons. And I think one of their goals was to try to incentivize you using multiple weapons per level and swapping back and forth to stop them from breaking and having them available. But even Dark Souls 2 didn't quite make it enough of a pressing concern to justify that. The funny thing is that if you played the game at 60 frames per second on PC, your weapon durability went down twice as fast. So it came much closer to becoming a concern there because it was the durability system was tied to the frame rate, which is very funny. And in a way, that version was kind of improved just because it made that mechanic more of a mechanic instead of less of a mechanic. Because otherwise, why bother? It was seen as a bug, and maybe it was, but it also seemed like it was better that way, if they were going to try to make it a thing. But overall, in, in Dark Souls 3 and, and Bloodborne, they largely had given up on it. One of the weirdest implementations is that, of all places, of all things, Bloodborne added the Tenitris, which was a weapon that you kept igniting. That's where the voice was coming from. The phone, which I can't interact with. Give item! But yeah, the, the Bloodborne Tenitris was the one case where there was one piece of equipment that lost durability quickly compared to everything else. And that was its a quirk it had. It was just very odd. But it still didn't lose it fast enough to be that much of a concern, so it's still I still side on the idea that Bloodborne just shouldn't have durability. It's just kind of stupid. It doesn't serve a purpose. It gives you a tax slash chore to do every half an hour or so as upkeep. That's a, a small loss of souls that just fucks you if you don't keep up with it. But... It's, it's just, it doesn't, it's not interesting gameplay mechanics, usually. But it looks like this one goes down pretty quickly, and you should be worried about it, and might have to, and over the course of a longer boss fight, you might have to repair mid-fight. And that is when it becomes a mechanic. You gotta go all in or go home. Some enemies become red, and use a strong attack called a fury attack. You can't dodge or guard fury attacks, but you can counter with a perfect guard. You can't dodge a fury attack? That doesn't make any sense. They must, they must mean that you don't have iframes. Surely you can dodge it, like the... It's interesting because this game has not explained iframes. In fact, almost none of these games explain that iframes exist. So one of the weird hurdles of playing a Souls-like is learning the fact that... Yeah, you know that thing where you dodge, like you do a, a little move to escape a, a swing? That in real life you would... The point is to escape the range of the attack and physically not make contact with the attack, and that's how a real human avoids being hurt. But in Souls-like territory, that role has iframes and part of the animation, invincibility frames, which means that during that part of the animation you can't take damage. So if you time the dodge just right, the weapon passes through you without hurting you, which makes no sense. It makes no, it makes no intuitive sense and needs to be explained at some point to the player and does happen, but not in the game. At some point, they'll be told that, but the game won't tell them that, that, the, that they have iframes. Uh, so I think here, the game never also never told me about iframes, or maybe I skipped it because I was like, I know what dodging is. But uh, now they're introducing the idea that you can't dodge, and I think what they mean is that your, your iframes of your dodge don't work against this. Because surely you could still physically dodge backwards to escape the range of the attack, and if you are out of the range of the attack, then you don't get hit. So this is the parry mechanic, though. This is how they press you to actually learn the... the let's see. Eh. Ow. Ah. Yeah, there it is. I dodged just fine. Ah! Well, that was embarrassing. It went about it, about how I expected. So yes, I was trying to perfect parry those, and I failed every time. So 
Some people are so good at this stuff. I know Toaster and Andrew will, like breeze through Sekiro. Look at that. Like there are multiple fights in those games that were pretty hard. And they're like, what? No, I beat on my first try. And that upsets me. <laughs> I'm being shot at. Oh, why'd I go slow? Is that just the pickup item animation? Okay. Kick! You don't got no head. You don't got no head. I think all the puppies look like that, but from this distance, he looks like he has arms on his shoulders, and that's a little, that's freaking me out. I mean, not the normal, not the ones he's supposed to have, but the other, like, more, like, human arms, in addition. Ah, oh, plunging attack. Well, did that wrong. I think I pressed it too early. Should be using more Fable. I think to some extent when it comes to... Uh, this feels like an ambush. In fact, it gives me Capra Demon flashbacks with the room shape. Urgent repair tool. It might be a grinder replacement you can use faster, but with limited use. Yeah, the thing with special moves like that is that on some level I'm afraid to use them because they're not always available. I'd want to, like, fire them out during a boss fight just because they're a resource to use to my advantage, but on normal enemies I kind of want to fall into the groove of, like, what is the reliable attack that always kills them? Like, what is how many hits does it take? Like, launching off, launching off this heavy attack oh, is a kill. out and up wanting to do like a consistent groove I don't know if I've actually done a single iframe dodge this entire game so far yeah god damn it attacking enemies will now recharge my heal I am not on top of things with this parry. Shortcut. So that takes me through the side door back to here. I suppose I might as well level in if they're going to loop me back to here. Might as well give it a go. So I now need 300 to level. Can I do that? Oop. Yes. As a matter of fact. And then I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 700 more. I, that I, wanna, I will not be able to get another, another level, but I'm very close to getting another one. Yep, yeah, we need 900. Alright, so now all the enemies will be back, including these ones. So let's test how corpse runs work. And so on. What kind of leashing range is there? How far do people follow me? So I unlocked this shortcut. And the question is how much will people follow me if I just make a break back to where I was? Anybody else? 
buds. A powerful parade puppet. You just said something so funny to me. Okay, so that's the way forward, the circus. I don't think I explored downstairs. I think I came up here first. Oh, there's a few enemies here. Oh. I came so close to taking both of them out in the same combo. That would have been very nice. I can't believe there's a powerful parade puppet. Yeah, yeah, this area down here. Able catalyst. Eh. Well, I guess that's it then. <laughs> can't go through there. Let's see if I can round out the first episode with a boss fight then. The powerful parade puppet. That's what I thought. <laughs> is he gonna like... Is he gonna jump at me? Like a... Like a chess piece? I don't trust these stand-ups either. Oh, I can't knock them down. Oh, are you just a damage tester? Is this guy not hostile? Is he friendly? Okay, he is a damage practice guy. Hmm, I couldn't do the thingy. Oh, and here's the stargazer. I guess running back for that shortcut wasn't entirely necessary. What's your deal, bud? Hello there. Welcome to Krat, visitor. I didn't think there were any stalkers left to fight the puppets. You didn't hear? Figures. The whole organization fell apart. All that's left are wannabes and amateurs who think they can fight on their own. You ought to buy something while you're at the festival. You can't rely on yourself alone. Out here alone? You could use some help. Here's a festival gift for you. Now get yourself something useful. Pissing alone, stranger? <laughs> Electric Blitz Abrasive. Is the sticky white stuff? Abuse your weapon with Electric bl Electric Blitz. Sure it's a single use. Puppet's Saber Blade. The throwing cell inflicts electric blitz damage, so it's a throwing electric weapon. All right, there's the great sword, the rapier, and the saber. Those must be the three weapons I could have picked at the beginning. So now you can go back and play with a different one and do whatever you want there. Sword, great sword, sword. So I got the great sword, link slash, and absolute defense. This one has storm stab and guard parry. And this one has storm slash and concentrate. Sell. You can sell these for their normal value. And you can sell excess items here. Okay. Yeah, so I only need 700. So we should actually already be able to do that. Here's 600. 700. There we go. 
Hopefully I don't completely destroy my own build. There's some kind of distant tinny music playing. Introducing pup, uh, parade puppet. Here appears a terrific puppet that will enliven the parade. Introducing Parade Master, a remarkable parade puppet model from the workshop to celebrate the grand exhibition. Hello there, I'm the Parade Master. I like singing and marching with people. The Parade Master has the following functions. 16 jolly songs, cheerful laughter, and 54 parade phrases. Parade dances to delight children. The strength to carry six men on his shoulders. The Parade Master was made big in commemoration of the grand exhibition. Check out its charms on the eve of the upcoming exhibition. He's going to murder me as I try to get the combat down in my first real test. Against my first real dude. Where is he? I don't see him. Damn! Why doesn't he always do that? Hi. He's very large. Didn't time that right. No, God. What's he do? Oh, his head's a weapon, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Oh, God. Yep, okay, there's a real fight starting now. <laughs> and I was already dying to the rest of the other part of the fight. Hey, I did it. Now. I did the thing. Ah, uh, heal. Okay. Nah. First try, barely. Messy. <laughs> Eliminated. L me to. Oh, some of them were lighter than the other ones. I thought I was doing a thing. One of my favorite things is when people think that they see how bad I am at parrying and they think I'm faking it. Like it's an act. And I'm like, I assure you, I'm trying. I got. I did. I think I parried one of the red attacks. So that was good. At least, and then I did stagger him and get a, a a big attack in, which in that guy's case it looks like you stagger him and then you do the lethal attack. Then he even also gets like knocked down for a while, so you really get to just like get some extra hits in. So you're rewarded a lot for doing that. Why can't I level? It just says you storage. That's interesting. Hmm. Well, that's a question for later. But, hey, first boss fight down. I was given a quartz. 
Parade leaders ergo. 5,000 5, right there. Uh, although the entire audience disappeared in a, in a pool of blood, the parade master was cheerful. As long as there's a king, the show must go on. You get a lot of, lot of levels out of that if you don't want to use the item itself. Quartz. A colorful, tiny ergo fragment. It activates a special ability when equipped to the, to the P organ. There is a special kind of ergo with a different color and vibration. The workshop uses this gem to bring out puppets' different abilities. What is my P organ? Is it my arm? My this is, a, this is a legion arm. I guess my legion stat must be my punching stat or my whatever or the stat that governs how effective my arms are. I don't know where my P organ is though, and I don't like saying P organ because P organ. <laughs> I don't know if they fully thought through the implications of what it sounds like you're saying every time you say P organ, but they did it. <laughs> they went and did that. Uh, usually I have to use grind usually I have to go on grinder to get a P organ. <laughs>